Despite the season of heavy rainfall, Allied armies gather for new thrusts against further Japanese penetration in Burma. Here is the theater of operation. In this sector, Brigadier General Frank Merrill commands. His men, seasoned veterans of fighting on Guadalcanal in New Guinea, are known as Merrill's Marauders. Now in Burma, they go to wage their third major campaign against the Japanese invader. Here, Merrill's men are in camp. Here, thousands of miles from their homes in America, they carry on in a strange country, prepare for action against a foe they twice have met and defeated. For many, there are medals for heroism, for valor, for wounds received in action. Now they're on the march. Seasoned, well-equipped, they are a formidable threat to Japanese dreams of conquest in this part of the world. Near Imphal, the enemy striking to cut the vital railway linking Bengal and Assam faces veteran British units known as Wingate's Raiders. In the tragic death of General Wingate, seen here with Admiral Mountbatten, the Allies lost a brilliant leader. But the strategy General Wingate so carefully planned is being carried out to the letter. Here the Japs face the forces of General Stilwell. There below is the Lado Road, designed to bypass Jap positions on the lower Burma Road and open a new supply route to China. Using equipment flown in by planes, they are carving airfields from the jungles. American-trained Chinese troops of Stilwell's command push on with but one determination, to drive back into China and liberate their homeland. So far have they penetrated, supplies are flown to them by air. Flying freight cars maintaining an aerial supply line in skies no longer dominated by the Japs. Rifle slung over his shoulder, General Stilwell marches with his men as they move into the Mogong Valley. Now less than 100 miles from China, they open fire on the enemy. Killing and cutting off large forces of Japanese in Burma's interior, the combined Allied armies in Southeast Asia are striking back. Tanks playing an important role as United Nations forces drive forward to the aid of embattled China. of the Canadian Navy's own show, a musical spectacle staged by the Navy's own men and women to help entertain their comrades in arms. The uniformed audience is most appreciative, particularly when their own sailorettes take the spotlight. For men ashore after months at sea, a good laugh is the best tonic. Patriotic finale, a salute to the Union Jack and to the flags of the United Nations. At their headquarters in Italy, student nurses of Marshal Tito's Yugoslavian armies parade before wounded partisan soldiers recuperating from the battle for their homeland. 
In their struggle against the Nazis, these Yugoslav patriots have won some of the most amazing victories of the war. This 13-year-old youngster, wounded in action, carried messages between Tito's armies. Typical of their fighting spirit, these unconquered people board ship to return to liberated areas of Yugoslavia and take up the fight for their country. This group goes to relieve brave Montenegrins, also members of Tito's army, who have been sent here for rest. Under their red starred banner, Tito's troops continue the fight for Yugoslavia. Into a central collecting station in Naples pours a continuous stream of Italian civilian refugees from combat areas, unfortunate victims of Nazi aggression. The Allied Control Commission in Italy, handling a major military problem with every regard for humanity and decency, supplies food, clothing and medical aid for these helpless people. Warm clothing and wholesome food. In Naples alone, 55,000 Italian refugees have been helped to new health, new lives by the Allies. In North America, railroad marshalling yards at an eastern port reveal freight cars loaded with thousands of tons of war materiel awaiting shipment to Allied invasion forces. An impressive glimpse of something of the huge resources behind the powerful armies of the United Nations. Thousands of ships go the products of the United States and Canada. Manned by seamen of many nations, the heavily guarded transports are moving practically unmolested back and forth across the Atlantic. For today, so vigilant is the Allied patrol, enemy submarines are no longer a menace. There's one now. She's sighted by a Navy seaplane tender. Guns sweeping the trapped U-boat, the tender sends another would-be raider to the bottom.